All right, before we get into the studio tour, just uh, a couple quick disclaimers. First of all, this is really just for informational purposes. Uh, I'm not here trying to tell you that this is how things should be done. This is simply how I have my studio built out. Uh, how you build your studio is going to be very different depending on your needs and, and your show format and all of those types of things. Um, really, my, per my goal of showing you through the studio is to just kind of give you some inspiration. Maybe you'll see some things that I have in my studio that you feel would work well in your setup. So feel free to take notes, take some inspiration from what I have going on here. I've seen a lot, uh, you know, podcast studios that are a lot less elaborate than this one here and also some that are way more elaborate. So there's many different ways to do it. Don't feel like you need to set your studio up exactly like I have mine. The other thing is as well, this is going to be a highly visual episode. So if you are listening to the audio only version of this uh, episode of this podcast, I do recommend checking out the YouTube version of it. There will be a link in the description um, and uh, come over and watch uh, as I kind of point out the different things in the studio. I will be doing my best to describe them though, uh, if you are only able to watch or uh, to listen through the audio version. So. With all that said, let's go ahead and jump into some things. So what I want to do is talk you through all the different gear that's in the studio here. And then we're going to talk about uh, kind of how everything is connected and goes together. And then we'll get into some of the different capabilities of the studio based on everything that we have in here. So let's start with cameras. And to do that, I've got, whoops, I've got my trusty uh, Sony a7 IV that will act as my little handheld so I can give you a little bit closer look at some of the things that we're working with here. So cameras, first of all, this studio has three cameras. So the first being the one that I'm looking at. Let's bring the mic with me here. So this is uh, the Sony A7, uh, a, sorry, A6500, which is my primary camera. Focus is a little off there, but you get the idea. Uh, on that camera, I have a 16 to 35 millimeter F2.8 G Master. Uh, bit of overkill, to be honest, but that's the lens that I have on that camera. We will dive into some of the accessories that you see on top of that as we go along. My uh, second camera, this is my overhead shot here. This is the Sony ZV-1. That's what this camera angle looks like here. Um, talked a lot about this. I'm not going to say too much more about it, but it is a great all-around camera. Great for uh, podcasting, vlogging, things like that. The third camera that I have here is kind of a behind the scenes. Uh, this is the RX100 Mark V. That's what this camera angle looks like. Uh, this camera is a few years old. I wouldn't recommend getting this one um, for, especially for podcasting purposes. It was a little bit pricey when I got it. You don't need it, bit of overkill, um, but I've had it for a while and I figured I would incorporate it into my studio since I'm really not using it for much else. Okay, cameras. So um, the way that I mount my cameras, uh, you may use um, tripods, things like that. I actually use friction arms here. So to give you an example, this is a friction arm that I just have connected to the side of my table there. And this is from Manfrotto. These aren't cheap. I wanna say they're about like $150, but they're very strong. They're very capable of holding up um, a decent amount of payload as you can see there. But I've got a friction arm there uh, that prevents the need of having to have a big tripod sitting in the middle of the room. I can just connect there when it's out of use. I actually swing the uh, the friction arm to the side, so it's even more out of the way. And then for my other two camera angles, I actually use these little friction arms and just attach them to shelving that I have in my studio. And those work really well for smaller payloads like these little handheld cameras that I have here. Uh, I also have a teleprompter talked about this thing before. This is from a company called ICANN, and I am actually looking at my notes as I'm talking into the camera, which is a big help. Uh, so I don't have to be looking off camera like this all the time as I'm talking to you guys. I can just look right into the camera through the teleprompter. This is actually right here, um, basically just a, a little HDMI monitor. So I can plug it in to my computer and it acts as a third monitor. So all I have to do is drag my notes onto that monitor when I'm ready to go and uh, we're up and running. On top of my A6500 here in the back is a Atomos Ninja 5. It is a, an external recorder, um, also just an external monitor. So whenever 
I record a show. I am recording a high quality 4K version of it through that external recorder as well. We will talk more about that as we talk about how everything's connected. Lighting wise, I've got a number of different lighting options around me here. So let's start over here. So this is actually, that is very bright, but that is a Falcon Eyes light panel. And this used to be my key light. I like this light, but the thing is, it's just not, um, it doesn't diffuse very well. The light is a little bit harsher, but it provides a nice little bit of separation off to the side over there. Uh, a little bit of a uh, rim lighting. My key light here is this guy. The That is a newer uh, softbox, 24 inch, I believe. And I've got a honeycomb, um, what do you call it? A honeycomb pattern in there to kind of prevent. Actually, the reason that I got, this is what I'm talking about, this honeycomb thing there. The reason that I got that is because I was getting some of this key light reflecting off of the teleprompter. It was making it hard to read my notes. And what this does is kind of maintains the diffusion of the, the softbox, but sort of focuses the light more in one direction. And I just put that honeycomb on there and uh, totally got rid of all the glare in my teleprompter. A nice, easy solution. But the video light that I'm working with is the Godox SL60W. It is very inexpensive light. It's not, uh, there's newer versions out there from Godox who makes it, but I've been using this light for a, a long time. It's very reliable, little on the noisy side. I can, if I'm quiet enough, I can hear it. Um, but you know, I, I take it out in post as I'm, as I'm editing my audio, but if I had the choice, I'd probably get something a little bit quieter if I bought a new light today. But I mean, if you're on a budget, it's like a hundred, less than 150 bucks. Well worth it. Well worth the price. Also on the subject of lighting over here, we've got some accent lights like these guys here. These are from Govee, G-O-V-E-E. -E. Um, I will warn you though, if you do plan to get them, the LEDs are not perfect. Those are supposed to be teal in color. Apologies about the, uh, the uh, focus there, but some of the LEDs are turning colors, but for the most part, I guess, they do okay, and they just provide a nice little bit of accent lighting in the background. Finally, up here, I have a Lifix uh, light bulb inside of that, um, whatever you would call that. Uh, but yeah, there's a, a Lifix light bulb RGB. I turn it uh, to red, and it provides a little bit of just kind of red accent lighting. You can sort of see it reflecting off the top of my hat there. Um, so those are the lights that I have in my studio. Let's move into audio. Of course, I have the Shure SM7B, which is this microphone right here. This is kind of a podcast standard as far as microphones are concerned. Um, I like it. It's about, I think it's either four or $500. I forget where it's sitting at right now. Um, connected to this microphone, I have what's called a cloud lifter. I'm gonna try to get this on camera, but it's, it's in the back there. It's kind of hidden. Let's see, there it is, eh, sort of, hold on. I'm gonna make this work, there, there we go. So this is just basically, the, the Shure SM7B is known for being kind of quiet. Uh, it doesn't produce a lot of gain, so the cloud lifter gives it a little bit of boost. So it goes through the cloud lifter before it goes into my audio panel here, which is the Rodecaster Pro. This is the first version of it. I am hearing that V2 of the Rodecaster um, is a lot better, or at least kind of addresses a lot of the different bugs that are present in this one. I can say this one isn't perfect. It does have its issues, um, but ultimately it's it's still worth the money in my opinion, especially if you're a podcaster, you're doing it specifically for this purpose. I've had it for a couple of years now and I really like it. It still holds up. Um, moving on, another, piece of gear that I quite like is this Elgato Stream Deck. This is just kind of a little customizable button board. It works well, like integrates well with Windows. It integrates well with OBS. And you can just customize all the different buttons on it to do different things. And uh, I use it all the time. Then we have the ATEM Mini switcher board, the infamous ATEM Mini. This thing is a very affordable switcher board uh, designed for streaming. It can... Um, Take in up to four inputs, four HDMI inputs, and you can switch between them. Um, 
great little device. Uh, there are different versions of this. This is actually the, the first generation version of this switcher board. There are pro versions which allow you to record each input individually, I believe. Um, for my purposes, I record typically into my computer anyway, so I don't use that, although I'm kind of leaning towards upgrading at some point. But anyway, just so you're aware, I think this starts around, you could probably get the original A10 Mini for around 300 right now, I'm guessing, uh, with just price discounts and things like that. If, uh, if you have more than one camera angle, I do recommend something like this over just getting a single capture card um, because a capture card by itself, most like halfway decent ones, like a cam link 4k, it's already 150 bucks. If you're going to have more than two cameras, get an ATEM mini, but yeah, there you go. So we have the ATEM. What else? Then we have the last piece of the studio is my PC. Obviously I have some issues with cable management. We're just going to ignore that, but this is my PC. This is where kind of everything gets routed to. As far as specs go on this thing, now I'm no uh, computer genius. I couldn't tell you what the minimum specs would be that you would need to run a studio like this one, but this is what I have in my PC. I have a Ryzen 7 3700X CPU. I have an RTX 3070 Ti graphics card, 128 gigs of RAM, and I've got an MPG X570 Gaming Edge motherboard. And I, I know I've, I've run this, uh, I've had lesser graphics cards and um, I've also run it off of 64 gigs of RAM and it works just fine on those as well. So um, yeah, you don't need something this souped up. In fact, this laptop here, which uh, isn't quite as souped up as my PC has also been able to run everything in this studio. So you don't need uh, a super fast computer. You do need a relatively fast computer, but not super fast in order to kind of uh, run a studio in the same way that I do.